Okay, so uh, this course is short. Um, I'm really fast in speaking. Uh, we just uh, had the introduction slide. Now let's, uh, we, we talk about 43 slides now. It's slide 44. And this, these are the steps in the eye tracking data analysis. And uh, whenever I tell it, I'm getting tired uh, just looking at these steps. Um, especially the middle is, is really, requires a lot of effort so first of all we uh, uh, we uh, we collect the data then we pre-process the data so we look basically for fixation and saccades and if you are if we are interested in different types of movement different types of eye movements we have to um, uh, 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 aggregate the raw data into these types uh, of eye movements so we look for different events let's say and this is the data pre-processing and uh, fortunately we have a software uh, which is doing that for us each eye tracker comes usually with the software which is done by the vendor of, of, of the certain eye tracker and, uh, but we have as well the open source software and i can strongly recommend you the very nice uh, piece of application which is called Ogama. Uh, you can download that freely from the website and um, you can Google Ogama and it, it should pop out uh, on one of the first places. Um, although it sounds Japanese, it's not. It's, uh, it's very German software. Uh, that's abbreviation of Open Gaze and Mouse Analyzer. I like this software because it has implemented all or most of um, algorithms for uh, finding basic types of eye movements, it, it is doing great, really great visualizations and help us in these first steps of data pre-processing. Um, then we have the step which is called data preparations, like uh, um, check of quality check of our data. And usually what I do, uh, what our team is doing, is preparing the visualization of the eye tracking data for each individual trial for each person so whenever i have and pretty often i have like um, 60 or 100 trials for a person doing the procedure or different screens i show to the person uh, i do the scan path, scan path for each screen and each participant in the study. So it ends up with a couple of thousands of uh, images, eye movement images, eye scan paths. You have to go through and look for some strange, uh, uh, strange results. And nothing will tell you better whether the result of this person in this trial are uh, good or not than looking on the scan path. Uh, or not, maybe not good, whether these should be get uh, put out or filtered out from your, uh, uh, from your data set. Uh, because when, uh, even if I calibrate the person correctly, even if I have a great eye tracker and a great um, setting, and a good participant, sometimes the tracker get decalibrated magically. That's just a tool. I mean, it happens, especially when the procedure, experimental procedure is long. So then I see when it happened, and I know which part of the data probably should be uh, uh, get out uh, from the final analysis. Now, we should deal as well with the missing data and outlying data, and that point is blue because of almost none of the handbooks will tell you about it. So now, listen carefully. Um, I should ask whether we have any representatives of eye tracking vendors here in the room, because I should be more careful, probably. Um, even great eye trackers and a great software sometimes uh, gives you very strange results. Not in general, but some small, uh, small results. Like for example, uh, 
let's let's have an example of the reading uh reading uh, uh study you in our reading hyperlink reading uh, uh, study people were reading for 15 minutes or longer 20 minutes so in fact they, they did a thousands of fixations right during that process and you have these thousands of fixations in your data set but and we rely on the algorithms that they are classifying raw data into these fixations and saccades. But sometimes, and I don't know why, and no one really explained me why, I asked this question to several computer scientists which are experienced in eye tracking. No one explained me why. Sometimes one fixation is in super long without any reason. Like, most of fixations when we read are about 225 or 250 milliseconds. That's it. Uh, there are some variability in this. Some are short, like 80 milliseconds. Some are long, like 800 milliseconds or even a second sometimes. But sometimes when I look at the data, I see one fixation which jumps to 25 seconds. Doesn't make any sense or jumps up to six seconds, right? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, it is, there is, it's not, <laughs> it's not uh, possible to make such a long fixation. So I know that something went wrong. No one really can explain me why. It doesn't mean that I have to throw out all my data. I have to look for such outliers such outlying points because even a couple of such outlying points will change the uh, image of the final data they change the they, they can change the statistics so i want to be sure not to uh, have biased data for unknown reason right so that's why uh, look carefully for uh, for your data um, fixations and saccades and look carefully for uh outlying uh, um, data i was still seeing my presentation i'm asking because sometimes yes yes, yes perfect yes. thank you yes. uh, because sometimes like uh with these fixations uh uh google meet stops presenting without notifying about it. everything goes okay so fine so yeah look for that and uh, uh, and try to get rid of these outlying cases. I mean, the question is, we can get rid of them, we can um, change them into more uh, um, reasonable uh, uh, fixation duration, especially if fixation duration is somehow vulnerable to, to, to such an unknown error. And uh, yeah, it's good to, to look carefully for that. Mm. I said that, uh, uh, during reading, I give an example of six sec six second fixation, and I said it's not possible to make such a fixation. I would correct myself. I should correct myself because it is possible when you are, um, for example, when you are uh, Olympic champion in a shooting. They make such. They can make such fixations like six seconds. It's called the quiet eye phenomena, uh, and this is the last fixation they made uh, before uh, uh, taking a shot. They are in, uh, incredibly long these fixations, and they can last even six seconds, or sometimes even second seven. Uh, that's something really. Um, related to their training and their special abilities uh, of of aiming, uh, not only shooting. Some days, quite I uh, phenomena is also visible in other sports, where some kind of a aiming and shooting is uh, involved, uh, like basketball or uh, um, among tennis players as well. But it has to be trained, and these are not typical human beings so when we have this we uh i, I said that this uh, middle points are pretty uh, um, tiring or they require a lot of uh, time and effort 
then we do calculate the uh, uh, then we calculate the um, mm, the metrics uh, we, we are interested in we uh, find uh, initial relationships and different uh, uh, different visualizations then we do stat descriptive statistics and statistical uh, uh, and statistical uh, tests um, what kind of a test I should make and that's something what's really uh, thrilling because very often we fish for p-value and that's this fantastic phrase that some results are statistically significant yes they are significant some people say even significant omitting this statistic word and significant it doesn't mean they are important and that's that's really different um it, st significant doesn't mean statistically significant but we fish for p-values and uh, most uh, those who had uh, contact with statistics know what i'm talking about and uh, Mm, but the question is, what kind of the statistics we should do? Uh, it really depends on the uh, on the research design we have, and it's super important to be aware of of this. Um, I wanted to omit this research design part because it's pretty basic, and I'm sorry for that if I repeat what you know already. And uh, but. Uh, I experienced yesterday um, uh, uh, something what made me to what made me to to show you these slides. Now, uh, we submitted a paper to the CHI conference, which is a pretty decent conference for computer scientists, and then we got the reviews of um, reviewers who did not completely not understand what the research design mean and um, we had the design of uh, three by three by 16 but that was within subject design but they did not and that was all clearly written in the text and did not get what within subject what's between subjects what mixed design means whatever and they criticized of course a lot because uh, that's with pretty competitive uh, uh, conference so the reviewers uh, have to criticize a lot um, so, it, so I was writing yesterday the uh, rebuttal answer to the reviews, and uh, I was trying to explain this basic knowledge in as polite words as possible. Um, okay, so um, let me go here. Uh, so, at, first of all, we have these two types of variables: independent and variable, uh, dependent variable, uh, and dependent variable we are interested in. We measure that's. Uh, the, uh, we are interested in the variability of of this variable of this phenomena, and we look for source of this variable variability in the independent variable, right? So that's why we construct the different uh, experiment, uh, different research designs. Let's say that we have mm, mm, this variability represented like uh, in the colors, without. Uh, in fact, then. At the end of the day, we will see numbers in the table in our statistical software. But let's look at, uh, 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 let's think uh, about the numbers as colors. This is the variability, for example, in interest. The light colors are more interested and the dark are less interesting. And I can ask my question, why this variability is here? So, let me uh, do the study about it. And I have a population which varies in interest in the eye tracking topic. And then I uh, sample the population in three different samples. Uh, and I randomly assign them to do three different groups, right? So these are my small samples. The whole is my big sample. Is this is my sample in three different groups. I assign these people randomly so the variability of the small groups is as i assume is similar to the variability in the population you see i was trying to express it with colors on the slide so the variability in each group is similar to the variability in in the other group and they are similar to the variability of the population that's my assumption and um, when i do the experiment I can, for example, do the experiment and conduct the eye tracking course. 
and I can do it in a nice way, I can do it in a not nice way, or I can have the uh, control proof when I do the another course, not, not the eye tracking course. So I do the kind of the manipulation, right? And then I measure again, after the manipulation, I will measure the interest in the eye tracking. And I see here, after the manipulation, after the nice course, that the interest um, I think is higher is there's more light bulbs here. And in this group, there are more dark bulbs. So the, 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 the interest in the eye tracking is actually lower after bad course. And in this third group, there are different colors, the red color and the wet, wet balls here, right? So it seems, uh, just looking at this, that, uh, that the manipulation works. So I have here the experimental between subject design. Uh, what does it mean experimental? Because I randomly assign people to groups, keeping the same variability in each group in the beginning. Then I manipulated the independent variable by myself. I manipulated. And then I measured in the, in the, independently the dependent variable. So these three factors, and then I control, of course, of other factors as well. So the, these four, uh, these three elements uh, 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 state actually the, the, uh, that I can call this study an experiment. Any other study uh, without manipulation, random assignment to groups, and uh, and controlling the external uh, uh, factors is not an experiment. And I cannot uh, draw the conclusions about the influence of independent variable on dependent variable. In the other cases, I probably have the correlation design or the quasi-experimental design, um, which is in the quasi-experimental design, I look for differences between groups, but these groups are natural groups they are not manipulated by me. You know, like uh, people who are naturally interested in eye tracking and people who are naturally not interested in eye tracking. The eye tracking um, rejectors, we may say. And, um, and uh, I, would, I would see why, what's, what, what causes this difference. I can measure something, some dependent variable there and see the differences. So that that is the quasi-experimental design uh, per se, not experimental, right? So, um, and that's somehow explained on this slide that we have two groups, no random design, and we present the same picture or the same course, and then we compare them the uh, 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 the groups on dependent variable, uh, and this is the uh, experimental design uh, with within subject independent variable within subject factor, and uh, that's very important because we have within subject factor means that we have the same group of people and at two different levels of manipulation, two different manipulations. So we we have the same group of people, we manipulate them once, so show them image with text, and measure something, measure comprehension of the image. Then we show them the image without the text and measure the comprehension of the image. Of course, the, um, okay, you can have some questions about this example. The example is maybe not perfect. Or, in fact, it's far from being perfect, <laughs> but, uh, it's important to understand that we have two or more measurements of the same group. So, in fact, if you have, now I have to refer to my uh, to my experience with reviewers because it was so harmful. I'm sorry for that. I had to somehow um, talk it through. So, if we have the within subject uh, design of sixteen levels. So it means we did the 16 measurements of the same group. 
right? So it means that I can do the study on 15 people, on 30 people, and it's going to be valid because I will look for differences, how these people evolve uh, uh, in these 16 measurements, right? I do not have to have 30 people in different measurements. I do not have to have thousands of participants and that was the actually the, the comment of the of, of the reviewer i said oh i cannot uh, really i don't know how to explain but i've tried i really tried to be polite so i wanted to make sure that no one messes up here um okay so when we have the uh, uh more complex designs not only one independent variable but we have more independent variables and usually we have uh, and that's still simple two by two uh, design. It can be purely between subject design. So it means that the two independent variables, two factors are gonna be between subjects. So we need two by two, we need four different groups. Or it can be the purely within subject design. So it means that we will have eight measurements of something. Oh, four measurements of something uh, or it can be the mixed design where one variable is between subject and the other is within subject so we have two groups and each group is measured twice okay and the two by two means that we have two factors and each of them is on two uh, on two levels so each of them has two values like two by two uh, the first two refers to the first factor, it's on two values, and the second refers to the second factor, it's on two, two levels as well, right? Uh, so how to uh, deal with the big number of participants? Um, usually we want to include three, four factors in the, in, in the research design. The, the more you put in, uh, it means that the more mess you can make. But three factors usually uh, is what we need uh, in the experimental studies uh, and uh, sometimes we end up when we want to do the purely between subject design we end up with thousands of people we 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 should uh, 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 we should research on but the solution is a mixed design to think about which factors can be introduced or uh, changed to within subject uh, uh, design uh, within subject factors without losing the um, reliability of uh, of the measurements within subject uh, uh, factors when you introduce uh, uh, such things like when when you measure the same group of people a uh, couple of times of course that drawbacks as well because there is a learning effect or there is a tiring tiredness effect but when you think carefully, you can design the study really nicely, uh, having a uh, mixed design. And the mixed design is something what we love. And then you have to sometimes know how to answer the reviewers who do not had, who did not have the basic statistics or basic methodology course. Anyway, uh, that was the last word I, uh, I said about these reviewers. Uh, I love reviewers. Um, uh, by the way, I heard that there, there, there is such a fantastic group on Facebook, which is called, uh, which is entitled uh, Reviewer 2 Must Be Stopped. Um, if you have time, um, just go there. It's, uh, I have nothing to, to, to do with the owners of this group or creators, but it's it's really great one. And um, yeah. Okay, coming back to the design. Uh, how it can, how we can translate the eye tracking research into the this mixed design, for example. So coming back to my example of uh, leaflets in the science center. So the whole leaflet is, look at that. The whole leaflet is uh, has different parts. There is a title up there. Uh, there are three bullet points, uh, which are bold and uh, the most, probably the most important. There is some kind of a visualization and detailed description down there, right? 
And now the question to which we can ask is which parts we can ask the question whether kids who are visiting or visitors of the science center whether they really look at these descriptions that's one question and the more detailed question is if they look at the description what parts of this description draws the attention the most where they put the most their attention uh, now if they are they looking at, the, at these descriptions at all or not so we should divide these uh this leaflet into these parts so we should draw or define areas of interest around it and these are rectangular areas of interest as you see i draw them uh, as nicely as i could around these different parts on this here you see as well on this on the right and on the left and the different visualizations for different people for two different exemplary uh, subjects um, so uh, and the title let's say is not interesting for uh, interesting for us let's keep the uh, uh, title and omit it uh, in the analysis because title will tell us or looking at the title will tell us nothing i for simplicity i would skip the title now so i would say that we have areas of interest first second and third we have a1 AOI one, two, and three, right? Now comparing these two people, we see that the most of fixations are located around in the AOI one, and some fixations in AOI two, while AOI three is omitted completely. And this person just opposite, he put a lot of attention into AOI three, omitted AOI2 and some fix, uh, fixation number of fixations on AOI1 as well. What's the difference between these two? So clearly, we have one factor which is AOI with one, two, three, three levels. And probably we should look for some uh, between subject factor, which will so show, explain this difference. And when we look closer to different participants, we saw that there are, uh, there are similar differences uh, between the different between participants and we see the groups. So we introduced the um, so we introduced the uh, age actually as the difference. And it seems that the um, younger participants omitted this detailed description and the older omitted these uh visual description okay so that was the finding that was the result but we introduced the uh age and that age was on two levels younger older and that was that was it how the data looked like like we can have two and now i'm almost done before the uh the break now uh, we can have a long and wide format of the data in the long format one row represent, represents each value uh, uh in your design each cell in your design and uh, it's very mostly used within subject and mixed designs uh, studies and the wide format uh, uh, where each column represents each each cell in your uh, experimental design in your in your research design so you have a lot of columns and number of rows rows uh, is equal to number of of research subjects of participants so how to, it can look like so that's a wide format we have two people only in our data one male and one female and AOI one two three number of fixations so this is the same indicator the same the same measurement uh, number of fixations in AOI one two and three and you see the different numbers here for that person and for that person the same data in the long format would look like that so we have the subject one in three rows because AOI is on three levels one two three and uh, here we have a fixation number 
23, 3, 2, and the same for subject 2. So there's so many roles as levels in your research, levels of independent variables in your research design. Such a format, it's is much, I would say, is more uh, clear uh, or easier to understand when you run this statistical analysis. So, because each column represents a different variable. This, the last column is dependent variable. The third column, AY, is my within subject factor. And column B, gender, is my between subject factor. Boom. I can do a simple uh, analysis on this, thinking about factors within, between subjects and dependent variable as different columns. Mm -hmm. 